The story begins in a small supermarket located in one of the city's residential districts, where people are accustomed to doing their daily shopping in a calm and familiar atmosphere. This supermarket was known for its cozy environment, where everyone knew each other, and the staff was friendly and helpful. That evening, the store was filled with customers rushing home after a long day at work, but their routine was unexpectedly interrupted by the loud and biting voice of a white police officer. His voice echoed through the aisles, attracting attention and creating tension. The officer stood at the register, glaring disdainfully at an elderly black woman in line ahead of him. Her shoulders carried the weight of years of hard work and trials, and her face reflected fatigue but also a dignity that seemed unshakable. Her eyes, surrounded by deep wrinkles, bore the marks of care and sorrow, yet shone with inner resilience. In her hands, she held a pack of diapers, a bottle of milk, bread, and a box of oatmeal cookies. Items that spoke of simple needs and care for someone else. She wore a modest dress, a bit worn but clean and carefully ironed, as befitting a woman who respects herself and her family. Her shoes, though a little scuffed, were polished to a shine, reflecting her effort to maintain dignity even in the hardest of times. The officer, arms crossed over his chest, smirked and mockingly commented, Well, there you have it, the future. All they can do is buy diapers. Maybe she even bought them for herself. His words rang out sharply, disturbing the store's usual calm. His gaze was filled with contempt, as if he fed on it, trying to assert his own importance. A few people froze in place, unable to believe their ears. Customers in line exchanged glances. Some simply looked away, unwilling to get involved, while others appeared confused, unsure of how to react. Their silence only heightened the officer's sense of impunity as he seemed to revel in the situation. A heavy pause hung in the air, filled with tension and uncertainty. The elderly woman endured the mockery in silence, her shoulders sinking slightly, but she tried to keep her composure. Her life had been filled with many similar instances of injustice, and this moment did not feel particularly different. She knew it was better to remain calm and restrained, even though inside, she was boiling with humiliation and pain. Memories of countless incidents of discrimination and humiliation flashed through her mind. Recollections of her past surfaced, of years spent working as a cleaner in offices and hospitals, facing scorn and battling daily for survival and for her son's future. These memories weighed heavily on her heart, but also gave her strength. She had been both mother and father to her son, the only source of support he could rely on. Her drive to provide her child with a better future was the sole motivation that helped her rise from bed each day and keep moving forward. She remembered coming home late at night, exhausted, her hands worn from labor, only to find her little James waiting for her, sitting at the table with a textbook. He always tried to study on his own, not wanting to burden his mother, knowing how hard life was for her. He would sit at the old battered table they had gotten from the neighbors, his small hands struggling to hold the large book. And though his eyes were tired from a long day, they never left the pages. In those moments, her heart filled with both pain and pride for her son, who despite all the hardships never gave up. Those moments were the most important for her, giving her the strength not to break down then, and not to break down now. She recalled how, despite her own fatigue, she would sit beside James and try to help him with his homework, even though she had only completed a few years of school herself. She learned alongside him, and each of his successes, every teacher's praise, felt like her own achievement. She believed in her son, believed that he would escape the cycle of poverty and injustice that had haunted their family for generations. At that moment, 
a tall and confident man in a business suit approached the register, a stark contrast to the surroundings of the supermarket. His suit fit him perfectly, and he looked like someone who was used to commanding attention and respect. His walk was assured, and his gaze sharp and discerning. This was James, her son. But what the others did not know was that he wasn't just her son. James was the current director of the FBI, and his life was a constant fight for justice and the security of the nation. In his eyes was a mix of determination and care. He had come to the supermarket after a long day at work to help his mother with her shopping and take her home. Despite his position, James had never forgotten who raised him, and he always found time to be with the woman who had always been his model of strength and dignity. When James entered the supermarket, he immediately saw his mother and the police officer standing in front of her with a mocking smirk. His heart clenched with anger and resentment. Memories washed over him like waves, memories of his childhood, seeing his mother come home exhausted, yet always with her head held high. She never complained, always saying she would manage. She was his hero, and now he was ready to be her protector. He remembered her small, calloused hands hugging him after a long day's work. He knew the price she had paid for his education and for giving him the opportunities he had now. He felt the pain and injustice she had endured. And now it was his turn to protect her. James quickly approached his mother and his presence immediately caught the attention of the police officer. The officer, who had expected the woman to silently endure his taunts, now found himself looking at a tall, confident man standing beside the elderly woman. James gently touched her shoulder and she looked up at him, her eyes lighting up for a moment. Her son, her defender, was here, just as he had always been, even when life was unfair. In that moment, she recalled the years when, working two jobs, she hardly saw her son, but every time she felt his support and love. She had seen how hard he worked, how he studied, and now he stood before her, her shield and strength. She looked at his face, which reflected both determination and calm, and felt a sense of relief. She knew that now he would protect her just as she had once protected him. James stared directly at the officer, his gaze sharp and unwavering, and his voice firm but calm. Excuse me, officer, but you need to show respect to other people, especially my mother. She deserves as much respect as anyone else. He spoke clearly, without fear, and with a slight edge of challenge. His confidence, like his suit, fit the situation perfectly. The officer first scowled, then his face twisted in surprise. He had clearly not expected this woman's son to be here or to dare to confront him. Is that your mother? The officer sneered, trying to maintain his arrogance, but his voice wavered. He attempted to regain his composure, but he felt pressure mounting from all sides. James nodded, his gaze steady. Yes, that's my mother. And she is one of the strongest and most dignified people I know. She raised me, worked day and night to provide for us, and I won't let you demean her. His voice was resolute, and there was not only protection in his words, but also love. Deep and genuine. His words carried such strength and conviction that even the most indifferent onlookers felt a surge of respect rising within them. More people began to gather around. The cashiers behind the counters noticed what was happening, and now all eyes were on the officer. The atmosphere in the store shifted. The glances that had recently been filled with fear and uncertainty were now brimming with support and determination. People began whispering among themselves, and someone even nodded in James's direction, acknowledging his rightness. The officer suddenly felt pressure from all sides, realizing that everyone now saw him in a negative light. His confidence started to wane as he understood that his behavior no longer commanded respect or fear. It now sparked only contempt and disapproval. He mumbled something under his breath, looked away, 
and stepped back from the register trying to disappear from sight as quickly as possible. His shoulders slumped slightly, and the arrogance he had shown just moments ago evaporated. The crowd began to applaud James and someone called out, Good job, man! This moment became the culmination of solidarity and support among the customers. The store echoed with cheers of approval. People smiled, and even the cashiers behind the counters nodded at James in agreement. This was not just a victory for James and his mother, but for everyone who had ever felt the sting of injustice and longed for someone to stand up for them. James smiled at his mother, who stood with a tender smile on her lips. She looked both tired and proud. He picked up the diapers and helped her carry the groceries to the exit. They slowly made their way out, with people nodding warmly to them as they passed. At the door, his mother quietly whispered, Thank you, son. Her voice was soft, but filled with warmth and gratitude that was hard to put into words. James put his arm around her shoulders and replied, You've always been my hero, Mom. Now it's my turn to protect you. Their walk to the car was silent, but in that silence was their shared history. A history of pain, struggle, and mutual support. James helped his mother into the car and carefully placed the groceries in the back seat. He remembered how, as a child, when they couldn't afford a new coat for the winter, his mother had given him hers, insisting that she wasn't as cold. He had felt guilt then, but also immense love, a love she had always showered upon him. He understood that everything he had achieved in life was thanks to her sacrifices and her relentless fight for their future dot. On the way home, James couldn't stop thinking about how often his mother must have faced situations like the one in the supermarket and how rarely she had anyone to stand up for her. He knew that his current position gave him the power and ability to fight against injustice on an entirely different level. But in that moment, he felt that his most important mission was to protect the people he loved. He knew that his mother had taught him the most important lessons in life, resilience, honesty, and caring for others. And now it was his turn to prove that he was worthy of that love and those values. His mother glanced at her son, now looking strong and confident. Tears glistened in her eyes as she said, You've always been my light, James. I knew you'd become a good man, but today, you've surpassed my expectations. James smiled and leaned down to gently kiss her on the cheek. I'm just doing what you taught me. You taught me to never give up and to fight for justice. When they arrived home, his mother felt a sense of relief washing over her. She had always feared that her son would have to face the same hardships she had endured. But today, she saw that he was handling them with honor and dignity. She knew that his position as the director of the FBI gave him a lot of power and opportunities. But today he had proven that his strength lay not in his title, but in his ability to stand up for the people he loved. James helped his mother out of the car and carried the groceries into the house. As they stepped inside, it felt as though they had left behind all the day's trials and tribulations. The apartment was small but cozy, filled with memories and items that held pieces of their shared history. On the shelves stood photos of James from his school years, his diplomas, and little mementos his mother had collected over the years.